And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a little girl and the terror in a vacant lot. We call it The Screaming Woman. So now, starring Sherry Jackson, here is tonight's suspense play, The Screaming Woman. I'm Margaret Leary, and i got to tell you how it happened. It was Thanksgiving Day, and it was nice and sunshiny, almost like summer except cooler. Mama was cooking the turkey, and I was watching. And Mama said to me, Oh, good heavens, I forgot. Your Aunt Betty's made some cranberry relish for us. Run over and get it, Margaret, so her feelings aren't hurt. And hurry, dear, this turkey's done to a turn. So I ran to Aunt Betty's, and on the way back I took a shortcut through Mr. Kelly's loft. It's a swell place to play Indians and cowboys, or explore, or hunting for treasure, because trucks dump all kinds of stuff there. Loads of dirt and junk, and even big things like old cars and, and big pipes and chunks of concrete. Well, this day, coming back from Aunt Betty's, I saw that a lot of new chunk of dirt had been dumped there since Saturday. They'd even covered up a swell big concrete pipe that us kids called our fort. Covered it clear up. Well, I was looking around to see where it used to be, when all of a sudden... The sound was coming up out of the ground. A woman was buried under the junk and dirt and glass, and, and she was screaming all wild and horrible for someone to dig her out. I started to run. I fell down and got up and ran some more. It was an awful, awful long way to our house that day. Mama, Mama! Margaret! Mama, Mama! Margaret, haven't I told you not to slam the door? Oh, is that the relish? Listen, Mama, there's a screaming woman in the lot. Wash your hands, Margaret. She was screaming and screaming and screaming. Mama, Mama, listen to me. We've got to dig her out. She's buried under tons and tons of dirt. Well, I'm sure she can wait till after dinner. Oh, honestly, next year, I swear I'm going to buy a bigger platter. Mama, don't you believe me. you got to believe me. Oh, look, honey, I've got a million things to do. Oh, good gosh, look at you. How'd you get your knees so dirty? Well, running back from the lot, well, I... Well, never mind. Scoot and tell your dad we're about to eat. Uh, he's in the front room reading his paper. Dad! Oh, Dad, i, I got to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Getting hungry, baby? Dad, there's a screaming woman in the lot. Mm. I never knew a woman who didn't. we got to get picks and shovels and dig her up. Dad! Oh, I don't feel much like an archaeologist today, Margaret. Can't think of anything but food. Let's have an expedition next Sunday and dig her up. But we can't wait that long. Dad, you'll die if we don't do it now. Calm down now. Dad, please! Listen, dear. After our Thanksgiving dinner, I'll come out and listen to your screaming woman. How's that? No, now, Dad. Maybe she'll die if you don't come out now. You've got to come now. Margaret. If you believe me, you wouldn't wait. Margaret, listen. You never believe me. Mama doesn't believe me. Nobody believes me. Margaret, quiet down right this minute. Or I not only won't go with you, but you'll go to your room and stay. And without your Thanksgiving dinner. Now, is that clear? Yes, sir. It's clear. <laughs> Margaret, you heard, Mother. Don't gobble. But, Dad, we've got to hurry. My dear young lady, this is Thanksgiving dinner, an occasion when we do not hurry. Oh, please, please, Listen, Dad. If, if you pester me any more, if you mention her again, this screaming what's this, I won't go out with you to hear her recital at all. Now, is that understood? Yes, sir. It's understood. Well, now that I can be thankful for a full stomach... I guess we should consider what other things we have to be thankful for. Well, we're all healthy. Mm hmm. And I'm thankful for my big daughter. Right, baby? Yes, Dad. And for my loving wife, who is still the most romantic woman I know. Oh, silly. <laughs> I'm thankful I didn't marry somebody else. Well, you nearly married Dora Lampel. You even gave her a oh, ring. Oh, that never meant a thing. No. You've only had one serious competitor since we were all kids. Oh, who? Helen Nesbitt. Oh. Yeah, Helen was my first love. When she was about as old as Margaret, I gave her a present one Christmas, and she gave me one. I still have it. That paperweight on your yeah. desk. It's funny how we hang on to things that were important when we were kids. Dad. Now, just a little longer, Margaret. Oh, Dad. 
Dad, oh, please. Oh, go on, dear. You'd better take her out to the lot before she collapses. Okay. Come on, Margaret. Let's hear this wailing banshee of yours. Now, just where is this screaming woman of yours? Lead me to her. Over here, where our fort used to be. The fort? The big concrete pipe. It's all covered up now. Mm, Kelly is really getting this lot filled in. All right, where's the lady? Right about here, Dad. Listen. <laughs> Don't hear a thing except the wind. You better button your sweater, Margaret. Shh. Listen. No, it's the trolley over on Aspen Street. Hey there! Screaming woman! Hey! <laughs> I'm afraid your screaming woman's let you down. But she was here, Dad. Right under where they've dumped all this dirt. I heard her screaming and screaming and screaming like she was underneath in the fort. Somebody's dumped tons and tons right on top of our fort. Oh, well, it's too bad they buried your fort, dear. I saw two of Kelly's big trucks here last evening, and there was a dump truck in here this morning, too. It isn't because they covered the fort. Well, it must be your screaming woman doesn't like grown-ups. Oh. Only delivers her solo for kids. Maybe she can't scream anymore. Well, I'm going to back... Take a nap now. Let my dinner settle. Aren't you going to help me dig? Don't you think this is a sort of silly game? It's not a game. All right. All right, dear, but don't stay too long. Mama probably would like some help with those dishes. Dad! Dad! Oh, I know I heard her scream. I know it. Darn, darn, darn. <sighs> there. You are there. Hey, screaming woman. Why didn't you scream before? Why didn't you scream so daddy could hear you? Oh, just don't scream for me. I can't help you all by myself. There now, Margaret. Come here. Come here. Let me feel your head. Please, Daddy. Please. Oh, please. you've got a fever. Please, now, you're Daddy. going to lie down, young lady. We can't leave her down there, Dad. We can't. Now, come along in your room. It's awful, Dad. It's awful for her to be screaming and, and screaming and nobody listening or caring. Margaret. She'll choke when there isn't any more air and then she'll die. You're going to lie down the rest of the afternoon before you make yourself sick. <laughs> no, I've got to dig her up. I've got to go back. It's all those comic books you've read, darling. Now, I forbid you to leave the house. Close your eyes and take a nap like a good little girl. <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You are listening to The Screaming Woman, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Today begins Red Cross Month, a reminder to all Americans whether or not you have ever benefited personally from the far-flung effective relief and rehabilitation programs of your Red Cross. Your month of March donation to the Red Cross, which you are urged to make, will keep Red Cross activities in progress. But you are urged to take a still more important step in addition. You are urged to be an active member of your local Red Cross chapter. Remember, the Red Cross is people helping people. Join and serve more effectively to benefit should the need arise. And now, we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage, Sherry Jackson, starring in tonight's production of The Screaming Woman, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. After a while, I stopped crying. I had to get back to the lot where that woman was screaming, but I was locked in. So I tied a sheet to the bed and let it out the window and shinny down to the ground. Then I ran to the garage and got shovels and ran to the empty lot. 
The sun was almost down and it was getting cold. I started to dig fast. Hi, Maggie. It was Dippy Smith. He goes to my school. What you digging for? For a screaming woman. She's down on the ground, and I'm going to dig her up. You can help me dig, Dippy. There's an extra shovel. I don't hear nothing. Well, listen. Just listen. No, I don't hear nothing. Well, just wait. You will. Hey, there. There, did you hear it? Hey, that's okay. Do it again. Do what again? The scream. Do it again. Go on. I'll give you this Aggie if you teach me to do it. Hot dog! Did you get that ventriloquist book for a dime from the magic company? You got one of those tin things in your mouth? I won't tell you unless you help me dig. Okay, swell, give me the shovel. Hot dog! And you gotta dig fast, like this. Boy, you think she was right under our feet. Oh, you're wonderful, Maggie. Well, what's the screaming woman's name? You made up a name for her yet? Oh, sure. Her name is Shirley Miller, and she's a rich old lady, 160 years old, and she was buried by a crook named Spike. Come on, Dippy, dig! <laughs> there. Oh, sure. Don't you believe me? I wasn't throwing my voice. Honest, I wasn't, Dippy. Hey, you couldn't talk and scream together. There really is a woman here. That's what I told you. Come on, let's dig. How's she breathing, do you think? I think she's in the fort. Remember? Sure, that's where she is. Five or six of us kids could get in it, so it's big enough. Hey! What do you chicks think you're doing? Oh, hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Kelly. Kelly. I'm tired of chasing you out of this lot. If one of you get hurt, maybe your folks would sue me. But, Mr. Kelly, there's a woman screaming. You kids beat it, you hear? Y yes, sir. But listen, Mr. Kelly, don't you hear? There. I don't hear anything, and neither do you, and I'll beat it. Uh, come on, Maggie. Oh, Mr. Kelly, somebody's got to dig her don't up. Don't argue with me, or I'll phone your folks. This is my property. Do I have to put up a fence? Why should I spend money to keep people off my property? I put him on my fence. Dippy. Dippy, it's him. He's the one. Huh? He murdered Mrs. Kelly. He hit her on the head and, and stuck her in the fort and dumped loads of dirt on top. But she wasn't dead. She came too. Well, you saw him. He stood right there when she screamed and wouldn't pay any attention. Hey, that's right. He stood right there and lied to us. What do we do, Maggie? There's only one thing to do. We'll phone the police and, and tell them to come and arrest Mr. Kelly. Hey, they sure got here fast, Maggie. Shh. Don't make a sound. Stay down. Mr. Kelly might get desperate and, and shoot or something. You, Mr. Kelly? Yes, sir. Well, what can I do for you? Is uh, Mrs. Kelly at home this evening? Why, sure. Yeah. May I see her, sir? Why, sure, sure. Yeah. Hey, Anna! What's up? Well, we got a call. Um, oh, good evening, ma'am. What is it, officer? Well, I'm sorry, folks. We, we got a call that Mrs. Kelly was buried alive in some empty lot. It sounded like some kid calling, but we had to make sure. We always checked. Well, oh, I can't understand. It's those blasted kids. If I ever kiss them, I'll break their necks. Maggie, cheese it. Boy, if 
Kelly telephones my dad, I'll get a licking. What'll we do about the screaming woman? Oh, to heck with her. I'm not going near that lot again. Wait a minute, Dippy. I know why he didn't hear the screams. Kelly's sort of deaf. Mama says he's hard of hearing. Well, he, he heard us, didn't he? He heard the cop. He reads people's lips. But he couldn't hear the screaming woman because he couldn't see her. Dippy, come on. We gotta go dig some more. No, sir. We got to. We're in a pack of trouble because of your old darn old screaming woman. I'm not gonna get in any more trouble. No, sir. So long, Maggie. <laughs> And he went off and left me all alone. It was dark now, and, and Dad would be hunting for me. If he found me, I'd get a licking and be put to bed, and then nobody would help the screaming woman at all. There was only one last thing to do, to go all over the neighborhood from house to house and find out who was missing. So I, I rang bells and, and knocked, but, but everybody was home, and I was about to give up when I came to the Nesbitt's house. The house was quiet, like nobody was home. But I saw a dim, spooky light inside somewhere. So I just kept knocking and knocking and, and knocking. What do you want? Uh, 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 nothing, Mr. Nesbitt. I, I want to see Mrs. Nesbitt. She's not here. She's going to the store. Oh. Uh, then she ought to be back pretty quick. I'll come in and wait. Hey, 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 wait a minute. I'll just sit down here and wait. I sure like a rocking chair. Don't mind me. Go right ahead doing whatever you were doing, Mr. Nesbitt. I wasn't doing anything. Oh. It looks like you were packing or something with all those boxes and trunks around. Going away? No. Mrs. Nesbitt's been sorting things out, getting rid of a lot of stuff. Oh. Burning it up in the fireplace. Oh, yeah. That's right. Dad always burns our junk out in the alley. Cloth smells awful when it burns. I think uh, that... Look, kid, uh, Helen may have gone on from the store to visit a friend. Well, if she doesn't come soon, I'll leave. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell her you were here. What did you want to see her about? Oh, nothing much. Hey, that's too bad. What? I guess you lost the key to that box. You had to break the lock. It uh, was uh, broken already. I... Bet your folks don't know where you are, kid. No, sir. They think I'm in bed. What friend did Mrs. Nesbitt go visit? I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, look, kid, I, I ought to tell you. She won't be back tonight. Oh? Uh, no. Uh, she went to the store, like I said, but she was going from there over to Beechwood to visit her mother. Uh, on the bus. She'll be gone two or three days. Oh, that's a shame. Why? Mama was expecting Mrs. Nesbitt to come over tomorrow. Maybe to sew. Uh, you uh, better not tell your mother. You see, it's a, a, a kind of a secret about Helen going away. She doesn't want people to know for a while. Oh. <laughs> you know how to keep a secret, kid. I guess so. I'll, I'll give you something for not telling. I'll, I'll give you a reward now. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, all right. Uh, here's something for a kid. A doll. A doll? Yeah. Uh, Helen was going to give it to you. I heard her say when she was sorting this stuff. Uh, I'll give this to the little Leary girl. That's funny. Mrs. Nesbitt always calls me Margaret. Uh, uh, well, uh, sure. Uh, uh, that's what she said. Uh, Margaret. Yeah, you see? It's quite a doll. Old-fashioned, it's made of leather, and the, uh, the face is china or something. You see? Uh-huh. Thank you, Mr. Nesbitt. It's a reward for not saying anything about Helen being gone, you understand? Now, uh, now, now come on, I'll, I'll step on the porch light. Um, Mr. Nesbitt, I saw your dump truck in the lot this morning. Well, what do you mean? Were you in the lot this morning? Uh, no. No, I was home. I looked out the window. <laughs> Please, Mr. Nesbitt, let go of my arm. You've been playing out there today, answer me. Don't. That hurts. I wasn't playing. It's no fun now with the fort covered up and... The fort? What's that? Nothing. Nothing, Mr. Nesbitt. Tell me what you're talking about. Nothing. 
nothing but that old concrete pipe. You know something. That's why you came here. You've been snooping around that lot and you found out something. Yes. What do you know? I, I don't know anything. Let me go. Mr. Nesbitt, if you don't let me go, I'll... Uh, oh. Hey, come back. Come back, kid. I'll give you something else. I'll give you something else. Come back, kid. Come back. Mr. Nesbitt yelled because I kicked him and, and bit his hand. Then I ran, but I heard him run after me. It, it, it was dark and quiet and, and scary on the street, and, and more scary out there in the lot. I ran straight across the place where I'd heard the screaming, and it was so quiet. And all of a sudden, there was a man in the lot right in front of me. Margaret, Margaret, stop. <gasps> oh, Dad. Margaret, where have you been? Do you have any idea how your mama's worried? Do you know how late it is? Dad, Dad, he's after me. We've been up Mr. and down Nesbitt. alleys and clear down to Clark Street. I was about to call the police. The screaming woman. It's Mrs. Nesbitt who's down there. I'm going to give you a good licking. Mr. Nesbitt killed her and now he wants to kill I've me. I've had all of this idiotic talk I can stand. It's true. He said she's gone away and, and he was burning her things. You've got to believe. Margaret, that's enough. Now stop it right now. What have you got there? Where did you get that doll? Mr. Nesbitt... Well, I gave it to her, Larry. <laughs> kid stopped by the house, and I remembered Helen said she wanted to throw it away. Helen said to throw it away? He's lying, Dad. He, he gave it to me so I wouldn't tell about her. It was locked up in a box. He didn't have a key. He broke it open. <laughs> She's a high-strung kid, Larry. All the stuff she was telling me... He's lying, Dad. Why are you lying, Charlie? Lying... Well, how do you get that? Helen was going to give it to Margaret on her birthday. She told me so. It was a present I gave her a long time ago. She wouldn't have thrown it away any more than I'd thrown away the paperweight she gave me. Why are you lying, Charlie? I'm not. Don't look at me like that, Larry. As God is my witness. As God is your witness. No! Uh, Larry! No! No! Please! Uh, Margaret, run to the house. Phone the police and tell them to hurry. Tell them we've got to dig. Our king. The screaming woman isn't screaming anymore. They got a lot of people down there digging her up. Hey, swell! Hot dog! And you know what else, Dippy? They uncovered our fort again. And now we'll be able to get the kids and play in it tomorrow. Suspense, in which Sherry Jackson starred in The Screaming Woman by Ray Bradbury. Next week, the story of a man who tries to escape his past and is faced with no future. We call it Nobody Ever Quits. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and transcribed by Anthony Ellis. Adaptation was by Sylvia Richards. The music was composed by Lucian Marwick and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Featured in the cast were Paula Winslow, John Daner, Richard Beals, Howard McNear, Joe Cranston, Herb Butterfield, and Eve McVeigh. Join the FBI in Peace and War Wednesday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>